Welcome to the Daily Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scafree. And uh, we run this show here every Friday, 11 o'clock Central European Standard Time to allow you, the audience, to ask questions um, regarding data vaults, cloud computing, MPP, if you want. Anything data-driven is great. Um, if yeah, every, all kinds of questions are allowed, you could use the chat here in the client if you want to raise live questions. You can use the Q&A here in the client or just raise your hand and get voice, all good. Um, if you receive multiple questions, um, I'm going to cherry pick. I'm saying this every week and I'll uh, tell you in a minute or after today's session, more or less, uh, what it means. Um, the, um, yeah, if you don't receive any questions, I will talk about the cluster here. However, we have a um, couple of questions at the moment piling up, which is good. So um, there's no need to talk about my hobby project here. And I don't, didn't have much time lately to um, essentially work on it, to be honest. That's the other, other side of the coin. So it's good that you ask a question, actually. Um, yeah, OK, cool. So let's let's uh, step in. Um, so we received one question here. Um, let me just share my screen again. There you go. Yep. Um, all right, so this question here is essentially an extension to a former question or previous question that we had on same as things. And here it's all about business logic. Um, so in a book, for example, we have a, we, we show a same as link essentially that uh, could be loaded from um, a source system. And in this case, the, um, the same as link will be enrolled in the world essentially. Now, the problem is, what if the question is essentially, what if the, the, business, the, the loading of the, um, the same as link involves some business logic? For example, um, joining uh, data from different sources, for example, or having fuzzy business logic, fuzzy matching in, uh, in the business logic for uh, defining on uh, how these uh, master records to the duplicates relate, essentially, right? How you deduplicate your records, essentially. And uh, where do we draw the line um, of having transformations in the raw data vault or in the business vault? So the thing is, there's a relatively clear red line. Um, the idea is that in the raw data vault, we have no, no business logic at all, which means there should be no conditional logic except one. And that's the check if you have the relationship, the, the mapping, already in the target. So we can only apply this pattern, the, uh, having no uh, delta or no, um, no, no checks, um, no where conditions, no inner joins, for example, nothing that any way filters or, or yeah, filters your records, for, exa for example, or any other um, logic, to be honest. Um, we can only apply this if the source system delivers you those mappings. That's it. So for give you an example. In our case, we use um, Salesforce. And in Salesforce, we have the, um, we, we did, so we do it right. We deduplicate records in Salesforce in the operation system. That's how you should do it, right? And in Salesforce, we have a um, field that indicates if we deduplicate the record, what is the, I think, the master record of this duplicate, for example. So that's how I indicate that in the source system, that this record is a duplicate to another record. Um, that reference to the other record is of the same data type, so account to account or contact to contact. And that becomes your mapping essentially. That's a one-to-one -one record loading procedure from, from the operation system into the raw data vault. No conditions at all applied, except to check if the mapping already exists. That's it. To prevent having, I mean, the goal is to have a distinct list of relationships in the same thing essentially, right? That's why we have to have to check um, if the record already exists, that's it. And the same applies also to hubs, where you only check if the business key in question is already in the target, that's it. And then the other, uh, for satellite, same game. You only, the only check you have is to check if there's a change in the staging area that you haven't captured by the target satellite yet. That's it. Um, all the other checks, let's say fuzzy matching, or when you want to do some complex joining across two different source systems, that's all part of the business world. Um, the, only diff the only thing is, if let's say you have two different source systems and they share the same business key, let's say you have contact records on the same contact number on two different systems, and you want to deduplicate across source systems, that's easy because that's, that requires no condition to load the same same as link from two different, yeah, um, not from two different systems, but yeah, from two, two different systems in parallel into the same same as link. That would essentially integrate these records across systems. And if that's not working this way, for whatever reason, then you implement the business logic in the, in the business world. So there should be no business logic at all 
not just for the SMS link, but for any entity in the raw data vault, uh, in the loading process for any raw data vault uh, entity, essentially, right? Hubsing satellites, all the special entity types, multi satellites, non hisless links, and so on. The only thing you have is a lookup to check, do you have the record already in the target? And if so, you can skip it. That's the only check you have. All other checks belong to the business vault. So that's the, that's the data-driven approach of data vault modeling. And all the other ones we don't do, we don't discuss. Um, uh, because we just don't apply them. Uh, I just don't, and we just don't believe in the value um, of, of, of it, and to be honest. So let's, let's see that's the idea. So, and I have never seen them succeeding, to be honest. Um, all right, so that's the data-driven approach, and that's, that's the answer here, essentially. All to the business world. That's, a clear, that's your clear line. That's your where you draw the line, essentially. Very upfront, right? Um, all right, I know there's, there's a couple of questions um, that we have at the moment, on uh, which are piling up, to be honest. Um, I got a couple of questions for real-time systems and uh, at least one question on Databricks. The thing is this, um, we are currently working on a, a block series for the Microsoft block. Um, the first one is published. So when you go for, when you just search for industry blocks and or search for, for scale free, my name or the, uh, Mark Finger, the, our co-author, or my co-author's name, you will find essentially um, this blog article. And the first one, which is available online, is essentially a short introduction. What is the value of data vault essentially, right? So what's 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 in there for the business if they go for data vault? What's the end result? What what do we get in return essentially, right? It's let's say a pitch for the for your boss to essentially go for data vault, right? That's the idea. That's how it's written. It's really written for the business user in mind, not for you guys. It's uh, you know some at least some of the data vault advantages already. You might experience them already, but this is for for the decision maker to make the decision to go for it or not. And sure, it's, it's mostly based on Azure, but you can apply the same concepts on any cloud you want. It's, it's, it's all good. Um, and there is at least one article coming up, and it's more or less written. It's not 100% complete, but uh, the early draft is complete for real-time architectures. So that's, that's coming out, and there is in the plan, at least, an article on Databricks as well, for Data Vault on Databricks. And that's why... I'm holding back your questions because I want to. I want to essentially publish the article. Maybe maybe discuss it here up front, show the article, but then before the recording shows up on YouTube, the article is all there. So let's we have to time this a bit. That's that's the only thing. Or let it publish first, and then but then the um, yeah, I would say the um, uh, the surprise or the 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 the, the advantage for you is a bit gone. But let's see how it goes, right? So um, but but this these articles would answer your questions as well. That's that's the point. So I'm holding that back. The next article is on architectures, which is coming out in uh, before Christmas. Real time is due in January, so it's all close by. And uh, the Databricks article is in the plan. So let's see, um, maybe February, hopefully, uh, but I can't promise that one. So um, yeah, but real time is coming up in, in, in January. So that's, that's coming up. All right, cool. If you have a question like this, um, so thanks for sharing your question, by the way. So how do I get forward? Okay, there you go. So. Shoot your questions, right? So um, I'm always looking for new questions, all good. Um, use this form here, sfr.ee slash dbfriday to send your questions. Check out also our other webinars on dbt and on Westgate. Um, yeah, we're running well. So uh, check it out on our website, scaffield.com slash, uh, uh, yeah, Raute, uh, sharp symbol and webinars. I have to talk to marketing about the sharp symbol actually. But check it out and um, yeah, looking forward to see you again next week. Thank you guys, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on the number below here and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time, have a nice weekend, bye-bye.